Today we're going to continue graphing our exponential functions or equations. And remember, we discovered it yesterday that if we have something that has x as our exponent, x as our exponent, it's an exponential. Our graph kind of looks like the curvy shape that I have up on the screen. All right, so today what we're going to do, we graphed yesterday y equals 2 to the x. Nothing else was on that equation at all. Today we're going to see what happens to our graph if we, for example, the first one, what if we subtract a 3 off the end? What if we subtract something after our 2 to the x? Or our next one, what if we add? And we're just going to keep doing different things to the equation to see how our graph changes. Now, just like yesterday, though, we're going to use the graphing calculators to help us do things a little more quickly and also get us some more practice with that technology. So our first thing, it says the parent function, y equals 2 to the x. Maybe you've never heard the phrase parent function before. Parent function means it's the simplest form of that function. Simplest form. So we just have plain old y equals 2 to the x. Nothing else. Nothing else added. Nothing else subtracted. Nothing else multiplied, divided. Plain old 2 to the x. That's our parent function. y equals 2 to the x is already on your graph. Because we want to see what happens when we start changing that equation. So it says using a graphing calculator, make a table of values for the given function and then graph. Guys, we're not going to make that big long table every time. We're just going to get ourselves a couple ordered pairs so we can sketch that graph, okay? So let's go to the calculator. We have 2 to the x minus 3 we're going to enter in. All right, so let's go to our y equals and clear out what's there. Clear out what's there. Start fresh. We want 2 to the x, and then we want minus 3. So we're going to type our 2, our little caret key for our exponent, and then our x. I know some of us are still getting used to where to find that x. It's next to our alpha key in that upper kind of left part of our calculator. It's highlighted red right on my screen. Now, if your calculator is like mine, you have to make sure you arrow to the right to get out of the exponent. If you have one of the older calculators, you've got that little caret key, that little up arrow on your screen, and that's okay. Now we're going to do, what was the first one, minus or plus? Yeah. Minus, awesome, minus three. Don't worry if you have one of the older calculators, this is what yours will look like, and it's just fine. It's just fine. Let's just double check because some of you maybe didn't bring your own calculator yesterday. Some of you uh, might be using one of mine that maybe wasn't used yesterday. So let's just double check our window. Let's make sure our window is just that nice initial one to start with. So x min of negative 10, x max of 10. y min of negative 10, y max of 10. Most of yours should be set and perfect because most of these calculators were used yesterday or you had brought your own. So just double check your window. Does anybody need a minute to fix their window? Just raise your hand as I'm going to move on. Okay. Does anybody need help fixing their window might be the better question. Watch out for the negatives. Make sure, guys, for the negative 10, you've got that button down by the enter key is your negative. All right, are we set? We good? All right, so let's go ahead and press graph. Let's see what it looks like. Take a look at the graph on your paper and take a look at the graph on our screen. What's the difference? How did that graph change by subtracting that three? What do you think, Molly? The x-axis? Yeah, it's below the x-axis. So in other words, our graph shifted how? It went down. down. Our graph shifted down. 
Now, let's kind of think about this a little bit. How many down do you think it went? Look on your calculator. How many down do you think it shifted? Three. Three. So, let's go ahead. Let's go to our table so we can grab a couple ordered pairs to actually get a nice sketch. Second graph gives us our table. And then let's find some nice ordered pairs to graph. I want some nice numbers. I don't want anything huge. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to go with, I like 0, negative 2 would be a great ordered pair. That's easy to graph. 1, negative 1. That's easy to graph. And let's go ahead and graph 2, 1. That's fine. So just make a little chart on your paper. So we've got 0, negative 2 looks good. 1, negative 1. That's easy. Maybe we'll throw 2, 1 on there too. All right, so 0, negative 2, we thought looked easy to graph. 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. Now, we said that we thought the graph shifted down, and we thought, hey, well, 3 would make sense, right? All right, the part I didn't draw in on your graph for you, here's that imaginary line at 0 that our original graph doesn't cross. Where do you think that line now shifts to? Down how many? Three. Three. So now my imaginary line that we're not going to cross is now down at negative three. Let's plot just a few ordered pairs, guys. We know what the basic shape of the graph is, so we don't need like 10 ordered pairs. We just need a couple to get the right placement of our graph. So zero, negative two, right here. 1, negative 1, and 2, 1. And then we know our graph, that imaginary line we're not going to cross is down at negative 3. And then we're just going to keep rising up from there. Notice the points on the original graph are all just shifted down 3. So this original point at 0, 1 is now shifted down 1, 2, 3. My original point at 1, 2 is now shifted down 1, 2, 3. So we took that original parent function graph, we picked up the whole thing, and we moved it down 3. So when it says, what effect does it have? The minus 3, I'm just going to label it right on that equation. We saw that the graph moved down 3. That's known as a transformation. Remember, to transform means to change. So how did we change that original graph? We moved it down three. The other piece of this that we wanted to make sure we talk about today is listing the domain and range. We did it on two graphs yesterday, so I don't expect we've got it perfect, not by any stretch. So let's talk domain and range. Your domain remembers all possible inputs, which in this case are the x values. We can scroll all we want up and down on our table. I have negative values for x, I have 0 for x, I have positives for x, and we don't have any error messages on our calculator like, nope, sorry, can't do that. So that means I can do any number I want for x. Negative, positive, 0. You guys will get to fraction exponents in algebra 2. So you can write the phrase, if you want, all real numbers. Or you can do that capital R looking symbol, kind of like a little double legged R. If you just draw me a regular capital R, practice that one, I'm going to know what you mean. Now the range, the range is all of our outputs, or in other words, our Y values. Our graph, our graph is going to get really close to what value? We moved it down. Our original graph got really close to zero, negative three. Now, our graph's going to get really close to negative three. It's not going to get there. It's not going to go below it. All of my graph is up above negative three. So that means all of my outputs are above 
aka greater than negative 3. So when you go to find your range, find that imaginary line that our graph isn't going to cross, and you've got your number for your range. All right, so our first transformation, or our first change to our graph, we moved it down 3. Now for our second one, for our second one, let's use some reasoning skills here. What do you think the plus 3 is going to do without having to graph it? What's it going to do? It's going to go up 3. So let's see, without using our calculator to have to do this, let's see if we can get the graph we need. Let's see if we can get the graph we need. So we're going to take that imaginary 0 line, and we're going to shift it up 1, 2, 3. There we go. We're going to shift it up 3. Each of the original points on my graph are also going to go up 3. So if I start at that middle point, that 0, 1 point, and I shift it up 1, 2, 3. Shift it up 1, 2, 3. Shift up 1, 2, 3. Our graph's going to get close to 3. It's not going to touch it. It's not going to cross it. It's not going to touch it. It's not going to cross it. All my points just got shifted up 3. That's all that happened. If we want to put them as a table, and we'll keep working with the calculators if you're kind of shaky on entering those things in or getting the table. We're going to use it quite a bit today. Don't worry. If you want the ordered pairs, that middle one is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then I had a 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then a 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Our graph, it's that nice smooth curve. I can put anything I want in for x, negatives, 0, positives. So my domain, if you want to keep writing the phrase you can, I just like writing the symbol. That symbol represents the set of all real numbers. Your real numbers are all your positives, all your negatives, 0, fractions, decimals, all that good stuff. All the real numbers. Now the range. The range refers to our y's. Our line that we're not going to touch or cross is at what value? It's at 3. Now the rest of my graph, is it up above 3 or is it below 3? It's up above. So if it's up above 3, that means we're greater than 3. It means we're greater than 3. So our first transformation, a.k.a. change, to our graph, we moved it down by subtracting 3. We moved it up by adding 3. So that's our first change, our first transformation. Now, continuing with the adding and subtracting theme, what's the difference between the equation in number 3 and the equation in number 1? Where that minus 3 is at, right? Where is it at? Can we always, where is it at? So up above, yep, we had one negative, one positive. So then what's our difference here in number 3? I have a minus 3 again, but where is it at? What's it part of? It's part of the exponent. In number 1, was it part of the exponent? No, it was just tacked on to the end. So we're still going to stick with adding and subtracting, but now it's where we're adding and subtracting from. Now it's the exponent. So we're going to jump back to the calculator. We're going to get ourselves a nice little table. And let's figure out how to enter this in. Go ahead and clear out what you had. I want us to start fresh each time because you guys really need to get used to where to find that X key. That was my biggest question yesterday. Miss Callie, where's that X at? All right, so we have a 2. Now, if, if you have one of the TI-83s, the older calculators, 
you're going to press your caret key and then you have to put parentheses around the x minus 3. If you have one of the older calculators, you have to put parentheses. Otherwise, it's going to look like our last equation and the minus 3 won't be part of the exponent. So you have to put parentheses around it to let your calculator know, hey, the minus 3 is part of my exponent. So if you've got an 83, guys, I've got what yours should look like up here on the board. If you have one of the 84s that looks like mine, you don't need the parentheses. It's not going to be wrong if you put them there. You don't need it because your calculator will keep whatever is listed up above as part of the exponent. When in doubt, you can put parentheses if you want. That's up to you. All right, so do I have any guesses? When we added and subtracted off the end, not part of the exponent, we moved up and down. What do you think the minus 3 might do when it's part of the exponent? Any guesses? Maybe have it in, in your brain like, okay, here's what I think might happen. Our window we know is already set. You don't have to redo your window every time. Once you've got a good one set, it stays there. It's not going to change on you unless you change it. So let's go ahead and press graph. Let's see what we think happens here. Our graph didn't move up or down. Which way did it go? It went over to the? My graph went backwards. Yeah. All right, so which way did we think this graph has shifted? Over to the? Right. So let's grab a few ordered pairs. Let's go second graph to get ourselves a table. Let's find some easy ones to graph. I like when we have easy ones to graph. 3, 1 looks pretty good. 4, 2, 5, 4. Make sure you move your table so you have easy values to graph. Just use your arrow keys, and it should get you around your table really well. So go ahead on your paper by number 3. I'm going to pick 3, 1. That looks easy. I'm going to pick 4, 2, and 5, 4 is easy to graph, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that one too. If you want to do more points, you can, but as long as you just have a couple, you are good. So go ahead and jot that table down. All right, so we picked 3, 1 is easy, 4, 2, and 5, 4. Is that imaginary line that we're not going to cross, did that go anywhere, or is it still at 0? So at zero, we just moved our graph to the right. So that line that we're not going to touch or cross, it's going to stay at zero. So I'm going to go over here to three, one, four, two, and five. And I'm just going to draw that nice smooth curve. It's not going to go over that zero line. We just shifted right. And take a look. Up on my screen, it's red graph to purple. From red to purple, each point just got moved over three spots to the right. So in my equation, I'm going to draw a little arrow again by that minus 3, and I'm going to write, write 3. Now in our brains, I know, and this is why I like graphing it on the calculator, instead of just telling you which way it's going to go, if we see a minus 3 in our brains, which way should that graph go? If we see a negative, which way do we think it's going to go, left or right? We think left because left is negative values. But we just saw it. We've got our table of values. The calculator graphed it for us. Subtracting in the exponent makes us go right. So for some of us, we have to kind of get our brain programmed that way. All right, here we go. The domain and range. You can scroll through your table. You can look at your graph. Every single value I put in for x, it works. Positives, negatives, zero. I don't get an error at all. If you scroll through your table, there's no error messages. So we have all real numbers for that domain. I can put any value I want in for x, and I'll get a value out for y. Now, for the range piece, though, 
What's the line? What's the value we're not going to touch or cross? Zero. We're at zero. Is my graph up above zero or below zero? It's up above. So that means it's greater than. So subtracting 3 as part of the exponent moved our graph right. What do we think adding 3 is going to do? It's going to go to the left. To the left. Yeah. So again, we know it's going to go left 3. We don't have to take all the time on the calculator to do that. Our line that we're not going to touch or cross, that's going to stay at 0 because we're just shifting left. We're not shifting up or down. So that line at 0, it's going to stay. Take each point on your original graph that's on your sheet. For me, it's the red graph up here. And move each point left 3. Just move a couple of them so you get an idea where it's at. So I'm going to start with that 0, 1 point. I'm going to go left 1, 2, 3. Then my next point, I'm going to go left, one, two, three. One, two, three. Just do a few points. We know it's not going to touch or cross zero. So just do a couple points just to get an idea of where that curve is actually located. Just move, all I did was move three of my red points, left three spaces. So on your original graph, move any of those three points, move them left three spaces. And you've got your graph. Domain. What's our common theme here, guys? What's our domain going to be for an exponential? All real, all real numbers. And all that means is I can put any number I want in for x. I'll get a value out for y. No errors at all. They all work. Now, for my range, what value is my line at that we're not going to touch or cross? It's at 0. Is my graph up above zero or down below? Above. It's up above. Up above means we are greater than. That will change. It will. We'll get there. So what we discovered with these first four graphs, if we add or subtract, we're shifting where our graph is, up, down, left, or right. So adding and subtracting makes our graph move up and down, left and right. Just depends where you're adding and subtracting at. All right, there's a couple other things, though, we can do to our graph. So let's go ahead and flip to the back of this sheet. We're sticking with 2 to the x. We're sticking with 2 to the x. In number 5, in number 5, how has our equation been changed? We had 2 to the x. What change has been made to my equation in number 5? What's the change? Negative. A negative sign. A negative sign. So let's see. Let's explore what that negative sign is going to do. So I'm going to go to my calculator. Go to my y equals. I'm going to clear it out because I want that practice entering things in. And now some of us learned this on one of the previous examples. There's a difference between the negative sign and the subtraction sign. I need negative 2 to the x. The negative key, guys, is down by the enter button. If you put a subtraction, your calculator is going to say, no, mm, error. You're going to get an error every time. The negative key is right down here. Right here. And now I need 2 to the x. 2 to the x. Make sure you've got a negative, not a subtraction. Okay. Let's graph. Let's see what the negative sign does. Yeah, now our graph isn't increasing as it goes up. It's, it's decreasing now. So basically our graph, it just flipped over that x-axis. That x-axis is that horizontal line at the middle of the graph. All it did was flip it over. Let's grab a few ordered pairs. Let's go second table. 
And let's grab a few easy ordered pairs. Let's see. Let's go 0, negative 1. That's an easy one to grab. 1, negative 2. And if you want to grab another one, 2, negative 4. If you want. All right. So 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 4. Let's go ahead and graph those. What's the imaginary line that we're not going to touch or cross? Did that change from zero? Take a look at your calculator on your graph if you need to. No, it doesn't change. In fact, all we did was just create a mirror image right over that zero line. So we're still going to get close to it, not touch it, not cross it. And since we're creating a mirror image, that negative sign causes a reflection. And I'm going to say over x-axis. So it just reflected it. It's a mirror image. Instead of it being up above the x-axis, now it's down below. So we just, we just took that graph and we flipped it over the x-axis. We took the graph and flipped it. That's all we did. So now this makes... It doesn't make our domain any more interesting. Our domain is still just all reals. I can put whatever I want in for x. It's negatives, positives, zero. Everything works. But now the range, that value that I'm not going to touch or cross, that imaginary line, it's still at zero. But now my graph, though, is it above zero or below zero? Now it's below. So that means all of our values are less than zero if it's below. So you have to look at the way your graph is heading. Is it going in an upward direction or are we going down? Now our negative sign, just like with adding and subtracting, it makes a difference where the negative sign is placed. If it's placed in front of our function, we flipped it over the x-axis. So instead of up, we flipped it down. Now the negative sign is going to be part of the exponent. So let's go to our calculator for this one. This one isn't quite as easy as the plus minus. So let's go to our calculator. Go to our y equals. Again, I'm just going to clear it out. I want that practice entering in. And we want 2 exponent use the negative sign again by the enter key and we need an x 2 negative sign make sure you have the negative sign and then your x the negative sign out front in front of the 2 made our graph go from up to down flipped over the x axis what do you think the negative sign and the exponent might do? Flip it, yeah, left to right, or right to left, however you want to look at that. So let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Let's graph. And it does. It flips it, but now it flips it this time over the y-axis. So it flips it over that vertical axis. So it flips it. Instead of increasing to the right, now it increases to the left. So let's grab some nice, easy values. I like easy values to graph. What do we got on this one? We've got Oh, what's easy? 0, 1 is easy. Negative 1, 2. Negative 2, 4 if you want an extra point in there. Those are great to put on your graph. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 4. My imaginary 0 line, is that going to change? No. 
The only time that changes is if you're moving your graph up and down. Otherwise, that zero line won't change. My domain stays at all real numbers. My imaginary line we're not going to touch or cross is still at zero. Is my graph above zero or below zero? It's up above. So we're back to the greater than. So, so far we've seen what happens if we add or subtract different places in our equation. Now we've seen what a negative sign can do. We've got one final thing to look at. And then we'll put it all together. All right. Now we're multiplying by that extra value. So we still have 2 to the x, but now we're multiplying by, we've got a 3 out front. Let's see what that's going to do. Let's see what that does. We're going to go to our y equals. Clear it out. We've got 3. And then we have times 2 to the x. If you want to put a multiplication sign, you can. I put parentheses on your sheet, which is fine. Oops. Just kidding. If you want to use a an, uh, an, uh, multiplication sign, you can there. So if I'm going to multiply by 3, that means all my y values are going to go up even faster. So I'm multiplying everything by 3. I'm going to do 2 to the x, but then I'm going to multiply by 3. Not add 3. I'm going to multiply by 3. That's going to make my numbers bigger faster. So if you take a look, and this change is a little bit tougher to see. If you notice, I know you might be thinking, it kind of looks like the graph shifted up. But look at my graph. It's still just getting close to that zero line. It didn't shift up. It's just going up faster. So if you notice, our graph kind of hugs that y-axis a little bit closer. It's going up a little faster. Let's grab some values to graph that. So second table. Let's grab some easy ones. 0, 3. And let's just go 1, 6. Otherwise, we have to change our scale. I don't want to mess around with that. If you want to do like negative one, one and a half, you can if you really want another point, but a couple points will get us the idea. Okay. So I'm going to do zero, three, and I'm going to do one, six. So zero, three, and one, six. That zero line hasn't changed because I haven't moved my graph up or down. But now my graph, it just goes up faster. I know it looks like it's been shifted. I know it looks like it's been shifted, but that multiplying by three is just making us increase faster. All of our y values have been tripled. So instead of a y value of one, we have a y value of three. Instead of a y value of, or excuse, yeah, instead of a y value of two, we now have a y value of six. Everything has been tripled. When that happens and our graph goes up faster, this is known as a vertical stretch. That's known as a vertical stretch. So multiplying by that whole number makes my graph go up faster. If it's by a 3, all my y values now triple. If we multiply by 4, all my y values quadruple, which means they get bigger faster. The graph goes up faster. So what do we think is going to happen if I multiply by something that's smaller than 1? It's not going to make my graph go up faster. It's going to go up slower. So let's see what happens. Let's go to our calculator. Now, we talked about entering fractions yesterday. 
the good old fallback way for any of the calculators is to just put that fraction in parentheses. That will work on any calculator you have. And then we need parentheses 2 to the x. Now, if you have, though, some of you have the newer calculators, some of the 84s, if you hit the alpha key and then y equals, you can get a fraction menu. If you have one of the newer calculators, I didn't see many of those out there, but I know there's a few of you that have them. You can hit alpha y equals, and then you can create yourself a fraction. Okay, it does the same thing. Okay, I'm going to clear that out. Now, we said the graph was going to go up slower, so let's see what that looks like. Again, it makes it look like the graph has been shifted, but, nope, we're still kind of hitting that zero line there. The graph is just going up slower, which means it kind of looks a little bit wider than our other one. Let's graph it. Or excuse me, let's get at some tables. Let's go to our table, get some values so we can graph it. I might be thinking, whoa, this isn't looking so good, Mescal. I've got a bunch of, bunch of fractions happening. And guys, that's going to happen because we're multiplying by a third. When we're multiplying by a third, it's not going to work out all that pretty for us. Okay? So let's just grab some that we think, well, these look okay to graph. So let's just go with, if you're multiplying by a fraction, you're not always going to get pretty ones. So I'm going to go with, let's go, we've got zero, and the point three repeating is just one third. If I have a one, that's really two thirds. Two is, that's one and one third. If you want to keep the decimals, you can. Whenever you're multiplying by a fraction, it just makes things a little tougher, guys. It does. Makes things a little tougher. You're not always going to get pretty numbers. So let's graph those. X, Y. Zero. You can do 0 0.3 repeating. It's just a third. 0 0.6 repeating is two thirds. One and one third. So zero, one third, guys, you go zero and then you just go up a third of a box. And then one, two thirds, we're just trying to go up two thirds of a box. Then we have one and one third. It just goes up really slow. It makes our graph wider because it's going up slower. Our other graph, the one where we multiply by three, it got closer. It looked like it hugs that y axis a little more because it's going up faster. So when our graph goes up slower, it's called a vertical compression. You could also call it, some people also phrase it, as a vertical shrink. So stretch and shrink, for some people, shrinks easier to remember. Kind of up to you. It's going up slower. So we've seen our graph move left, right up, down. We've seen it flipped up, down. We've seen it flipped from right to left. We've seen it go up faster. We've seen it go up slower. Let's put all this together in one spot. Go to your last sheet. Let's put it all together in one spot. Let's put it all together in one spot. All right, so I'm just going to work my way left to right. This is the last part we did. We had a number out front of our base number that we were multiplying by. When that number, when that number was negative, our graph went from up to down. So when this value was negative, We had a vertical, this might be the easier way to phrase it. We had a vertical reflection. So it went from up to down. 
when that value, when A is bigger than 1, we had a vertical stretch. Whoops. Well, it's not going to, oops, sorry guys, my computer is being slow here. Spelled stretch wrong. I just want to fix it. There we go. And when that value was smaller than 1, we had a vertical. I'm going to list it both ways because some teachers call it a compression. Some call it a shrink. I want you to hear both phrases because I don't know who exactly your future teachers will be. So that value in front of our base number, the B up there is for base, that was our 2. The value in front of that base number can do many things. If it's negative, it's going to reflect our graph from up to down. Bigger than 1, it stretches it. It goes up faster. Smaller than 1, it goes up slower. If we add or subtract in the exponent, that was our left-right movement. When we had x minus a value, we move right. When we had x plus a value, we move left. And then when we added or subtracted off the very end, uh, after that whole power deal, Plus K, we move up. Minus K, we move down. So those are all of our possibilities. Those are all of our possibilities. So wherever your values add in the function, where you're adding or subtracting, where you've got maybe a negative sign, if you're multiplying by something like 3, those are all the things that can happen to your graph. So how I want you to spend the rest of your time today, because I know we probably won't get through all of those, what I want you to do, actually, I'll leave that right there. On those bottom four, try to name the transformations. While you're here and have a graphing calculator, Try to get yourself some ordered pairs. Sketch yourself a graph if you can. Let's take a look. We'll take a look at number one together. All right, so the first thing I come across is a negative sign in front of my base. So I'm right here. I'm right here. B is my base number. That's my three. In front of my base, negative sign. We're going to have a vertical reflection. So that means our graph is going to go from up to down. So we have a vertical reflection. And then in the exponent, we're adding 7. In the exponent, we're adding 7. Which way do we move? We move to the left. Yeah. So let's do this, because I know most of you don't have a graphing calculator to take home. So when you come back tomorrow, what I want you to have just tried on those last three, there's only three left, I want you to try to do the same thing we just did on number one. Just pick out the transformations. So in number two, what do you think the three does? What do you think the minus eight does? Just do that for those three. Then when we come back tomorrow, you guys will have the calculators. We can talk about the graph and we'll get you some time to practice graphing those, okay?